Hey Predators, Travis here with another review. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Victory Extortion SS. Uh, it is a uh, hunting arrow from uh, Victory Archery. So this year I chose to use this Victory Extortion arrow as my main hunting arrow. Uh, I did a trial a lot of different arrows as you can see here. Uh, I've got everything from the uh, Grizzly Stick, uh, which is basically a custom uh, Victory VF TKO, the Victory Force TKO. I also tried the Easton uh, five millimeter full metal jacket and the Dangerous Gang. Uh, lastly, I tried the uh, Black Eagle Spartan and the Carbon Express Maxima Red. Uh, all these are good hunting arrows and I also tried them against my original Victory VAP uh, Elite arrows. One of the main reasons I wanted to go to these arrows was because of the new technology that's in them. So what Victory has done this year is they've made an arrow that has uh, a completely different constitution than all the other arrows on the market. All the other arrows I tested are all either carbon arrows or they are carbon aluminum arrows where they have a carbon core and then a aluminum jacket. With the Victory Extortion arrows, they went with a completely different setup. So what they've done is they've actually layered uh, different layers of or alternating layers of carbon and stainless steel. So the choice of stainless steel is very paramount to why this is going to be a different arrow and why it's going to perform differently. So one of the benefits of stainless steel is that it's A, it's going to be a little bit heavier than the aluminum is, so it's going to make for a little bit heavier arrow if that's your thing. Uh, but also it's going to be less malleable. So stainless steel is going to bend a lot less easily than uh, aluminum wheel. So I've always been kind of critical of the full metal jacket arrows from Easton uh, because they do have the tendency to bend. Once you shoot it at the target enough, uh, once it hits something hard in, that, in those shots, there's a really good chance that it could bend and have a permanent bend or flex in the arrow. You're not gonna see that as much with the Victory Extortion. It is possible if you shoot something really hard, but in my experience, I haven't seen anything like that happen yet. So basically what they've done is they've taken carbon and they've and stainless steel uh, mesh and they've weaved them together and they've layered them so that you have multiple layers of uh, these two things together in this arrow. Uh, you can kind of see in the outside pattern the weave that they've got going here. So they've got it woven going 90 degrees from each other so that the arrow overall is going to recover from uh, arrow flight from the Arch Paradox, it's going to recover from it a lot quicker, which is really nice. And you can see that just by looking at the arrow up close, you can see that weave. Another thing you're going to happen is going to happen is it's also going to uh, recover from uh, torsional deflection a lot. Torsional deflection is basically that whenever there's a a this is deflection is when the bend in the arrow, and torsion is either from the flight of the arrow, you know, whenever the uh, arrow is, is flexing and bending as it goes down range. But not only that, also whenever it impacts the target, it has a tendency to send a kind of a shock wave out through the arrow and it's gonna flex and bend as well. So basically what this technology does is this allows the arrow to deliver more energy into that target that you're shooting at, okay? <laughs> So this right here, the one I've been shooting is the Victory Extortion. This is the V3 or the Gamer version of the arrow. Uh, with this, they only make it in the uh, Gamer and the Sport. The Sport is the you know basically lower tolerance. It goes to 0 0.006. With the uh, Gamer, it goes to 0 0.003. And then with the most arrows that they make, with the Elite, it's going to go to 0 0.001. So with these, they're still kind of, whenever they released the extortion about two years ago, they're still trying to perfect this technology of weaving stainless and carbon together. Um, just this year, just a couple days ago at the 2020 uh, ATA show, they actually released another version of this, which is actually going to be probably my next arrow that I'm going to buy, and that is the Victory VAP SS. That one does go all the way to a V1. Uh, so basically they've gotten the same technology and taken it to the tried and true uh, VAP arrows and put it in there. And so it's going to be an amazing combination. I'm running the 29 and a half inch link. Uh, these are the 300 spine, uh, which I'm going to put the stats for that over here on the side. Uh, also, I'm running the stainless steel insert. This is a 70 grain stainless steel uh, insert. Uh, it's really nice. It's gonna, a good improvement. The shock, shock insert, a shock broadhead adapter as they call it, 
uh, is really nice because it's actually got uh, an improvement over some of the previous victory inserts, which are kind of one of the weakest points of like my VAP arrows was the insert outsert combination. So with this here, it's got an insert piece that goes down about this far. Uh, again, 70 grain stainless steel. They also have an aluminum version that comes with the arrow standard. Uh, again, the 70 grain stainless version is what I went with. Uh, but then it's got a little bit of an outsert here as well. But also, uh, it's got a little bit of a, a channel just inside that that allows the uh, arrow to slide into that a little bit. So it provides a little bit of a collar there. Uh, it'd be nice if they added an optional collar to go on the outside of it as well to kind of help you make it even more rigid. Uh, but this is, you know, a good step in the right direction, at least for a uh, factory insert. So very pleased with that. Uh, right now I'm running uh, 100 grain field tips. Uh, whenever I'm shooting right now is whenever I'm hunting here in Texas. I'm looking for a little bit uh, lighter, faster arrow. I have no problem penetrating any animals so far. From what I've seen, these arrows right so far have just been absolutely amazing when it comes to penetration. I don't fear them uh, having any issues with hitting bone or anything like that. I think being able to deliver more of that kinetic energy and more of that weight and, and momentum into that animal, into the bone, whatever you're trying to hit there, whatever your arrow comes into contact with anyways. So being as dense as these arrows are, they're very quiet, there's no humming or anything like that, no noise going down range. Uh, most of that has to do with the vein choice on here. I'm running a two inch blazer. Uh, right now I've got the factory knocks installed. This is probably the weakest point of these arrows. They come with these very cheap uh, factory uh, knocks here. They do have other options. You can put aluminum uh, you know, pins and you can put aluminum knocks in there. Uh, I've just chosen whenever I'm actually hunting to use the nocturnal lighted knocks because it just works a lot better for me. Right now I've got the factory knock inserted. And even with this knock here, you can see it's got a little bit of a bend to it, which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, these are just again cheap knocks that come with them. But the arrow itself is very nice. In my experience, these are super durable arrows. I've been shooting them for about nine months now. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed with these arrows is that uh, I shot, I'll just give you a little story. So I was out, I was practicing, I was on top of the mountain at the Doss Ranch. And I was shooting at about uh, 70 yards or whatever, just trying to uh, see how far I could reach comfortably with my bow. Um, at that range, you know, right across the top of the mountain, there's kind of a wind blowing there. Uh, it's usually uh, north to south, south to north wind, depending on what time of day it is. Um, but anyways, I shot this at about 80 yards. Uh, the arrow flight was great. And then whenever I got, it got close to the target, the wind picked up a little bit and carried it just a little bit to the side. So it does have a little bit of wind drift. They're not quite as small as like my Victory VAP arrows were. So they do suffer a little bit from the wind drift, just from being a little bit larger arrow. Uh, you know, you can get some veins that can kind of help that and won't steer as much. Uh, but overall, like I said, I just steered about an inch off of the target. And I went, I missed the target completely, uh, right by the side of it there and uh, it hit a rock. Whenever it hit that rock, it jumped about 10 feet in the air and landed. I just, I thought immediately that that air was gone. I just kind of wrote it off as that's one down, you know? So I finished my, uh, my, finished my round there and then I went to go check it out. Well, to my surprise, I actually had a completely intact arrow there. Uh, there was nothing wrong with it. There was no bend to it or anything like that. Um, I was actually incredibly shocked. Hit a, solid rock at 80 yards and it was okay. Uh, had I hit that rock at maybe like, you know, 20 yards or 10 yards, there's quite a possibility it could have ended up with a little bit more damage because it lost a lot of that energy whenever it was going that distance. But uh, still, I have no doubt that these are a super durable arrow, uh, as you know, the victory of arrows have always proven to be for me. So, so I'm gonna stop wasting some time. Like I say, I've, I've really, I really like these arrows so far. Uh, but let's go ahead and do a test here. So uh, right behind me here, I've got a shoulder, or I've, I've got a rib of a cow, so it is a beef rib bone. Um, this thing is super thick. It's about the same thickness as what you'd see on a, a most deer, uh, the shoulder blade. So it's something you might commonly come into contact with. Uh, but what I'm gonna do for this test is I'm gonna kick it up a notch. Uh, I'm not gonna use my normal Rage broadheads for this because I know it's probably just gonna destroy them hitting that bone. Good possibility anyways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use a 125 grain grizzly stick uh, broadhead, the red line broadhead, and I'm gonna test that out. We're gonna shoot this cow bone and we'll see how uh, everything holds up. So here we go. Let's 
just enough. Alright, so here we go. Here's the Victory Extortion SS versus a beef rib bone. Let's see how this does. Let's check it out. All right, so take a look at this. Finally, we got that. Went right through the bone. No, no problem whatsoever. Shattered it. Look at that, nice and crunchy. This, this is a uh, ballistic vest. This is actually made for protection against like hand grenades and shrapnel and stuff like that. Uh, so basically what it does is uh, protects the user from you know sharp objects flying into it. Well, we're just going to use a field point today, but we will definitely be making a sharp object fly into it. All right, here goes our first test. Wow, that's pretty shocking. So, this ballistic vest that we're shooting is. It's not made to stop bullets, really, but uh, uh, stop the crap out of an arrow, so let's take a look. Alright, so take a look here. So there's where the arrow hit the vest, right in the middle. And man, that really dug in there, but it completely stopped it. So look, on the other side, it's not coming out at all. So, uh, wow, let's dig this out of here. <clears throat> that is stuck in there good. So yeah, look at that. It's basically went right in there. Hit into this right here, which protects you know the spine portion, and that completely stopped it right there. Alright, so finally got the arrow out, and you can see here the yellow in there. This fiber here. Whoop this fiber here that is Kevlar so this is a Kevlar vest basically we went through one layer of it and again we hit the plate in the back that protect the spine so if you're curious what uh, what we're shooting at here that's it uh, we're going to uh, play darts so I got this dart board at five below it's a super cheap thing but basically it's made out of uh, looks like about a quarter inch maybe half inch of plywood uh, just got some stuff painted on it but anyways, we're going to play darts, we're going to shoot this, and uh, see how the arrows hold up to it. That didn't stop. Alright, here we go, five yards. Let's see. Man, it went right through that thing like butter. Okay. So look, busted through on the other side. Just barely missed that wire there. But uh, yeah, that's actually bent the wood too. Getting it out is going to be the hard part. <laughs> I'm going to stop it. Hang a little bit further back now. About 10 yards away. That sounded good.
So if you're wondering why I'm so far off, it's because I'm shooting with this instead of my wrist release. So, you know, they're not tied in together, I guess you'd say. Man, it looked at it. it actually almost separated pieces of wood there, so. Yeah. <sighs> Wiggle it out. There you go. Playing darts. <laughs> Archery style. Right. So next, let's do... Shoot a book. Let's see how it does. All right, guys. Next, we're gonna try shooting a book. It's the one I've had for a while with WMD Mirage. Um, never actually read the book. Paid five dollars for it at uh, half price books, and now we're gonna put it to some use. All right. So again, I'm, I'm not gonna be super accurate with this because I'm shooting with my uh, back tension release. Normally, I use the wrist strap, uh, but like I said, this changes my draw length a little bit. So yeah, we're just kind of going for a ballpark on this. But. All right, here we go. Let's shoot. So what's really cool about this, look how big that cut is. So get close to the cars and see. You can see where the blades just absolutely slapped the front of that. So you see right there, all the way over to this side here. So you can see how wide of a cutting diameter the thing's got. Okay, huge cut. That's what I love about these broadheads. Pretty durable too. See what page so you got I, to. Yeah, I wasn't I wouldn't sure how far this would get in there. But uh, I didn't think, I knew it wasn't gonna go all the way through, but actually did a lot better than I expected. So, so let's see what page we got to. This is page 345, 405. Still a little hole there, 481. Okay, there's a little, just a little dimple on that one. Let's go back. Okay. So I still, Look at the, you can see the shape of the tip Keep going there. until it's like no more. There's still a dent. There's still a dent. Still a little hole. Still one. Still a hole. Still tiny, I can see. Okay, I think that's the page. 537 pages. Yeah, look, look. Okay, Five, go 535. Let's see, let's go look. 530. Just show proof. Okay, so you can see that right there. So it's got a little nipple there. <laughs> Little dimple, nipple, whatever. <laughs> and it, it didn't actually put a hole. Oh no, it did. Oh, it, it did. Yeah. You see that little tiny pin light holder? Okay, yeah, we'll page. count this. Five hundred and fifty-nine. Count this page right here. There we go. Five fifty-nine. So I went through five hundred and fifty-nine pages about uh, the WMD Mirage. It's kind of revealed the broadhead here. Let's so peel this back. So look at that cut, man. That is. Even this is 240 pages thick, in which this is a heck of a lot tougher than any animal. And look at that cut, man. That is just brutal, 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 brutal. So going through an animal, that would be pretty brutal. And the point's still sharp, too. Oh, wow. I know most people are like, oh, it's just a book. But, man, books have been doing amazing things. Whenever you stack paper together like that, it can stop bullets. It can do a lot of things. It's pretty crazy, so. Don't underestimate. Back. Exactly. Here over here. So what we're gonna do now is I got this old container of uh, I believe this is brake fluid or steering fluid or something like that. No, transmission fluid. That's what it is. ATF. Uh, and we're just gonna shoot it with this. Uh, this is the Nap Spitfire Double Cross Broadhead. All right. So this basically has a two-inch cutting diameter there with the blades, right? And then it's got these extra bleeder blades that add an inch of damage there as it goes through an animal, okay? This one's kind of a broken one, so that's why I'm shooting it at it. I don't really care. Let's see what we get. It should be fun. So we're about to make 
about to make a huge mess here. This will be fun though. All right. So here we go. Bottle of ATF. And three. Smell it. Oh. Yeah, let's see. Oh, oh, oh. Uh. Oh. Uh. Go, ladies and gentlemen, that's clean up. Except for I gotta get this out. <laughs> So guys, I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you watching this review. Uh, stay tuned for more things like this. Um, also, I want to thank you for you know checking out the channel. I uh, want to thank you for watching, and you know please go to uh, Patreon support me at uh, Apex Predator OD. Um, you know help me get this channel started and get it rolling. Uh, also check me out on Instagram at Apex underscore Predator underscore OD. Thanks for clicking that subscribe button down below, and as always. Keep defying the odds.